Hey there. Welcome to Essentials Paint Night. My name is Myron and I'll be your host and instructor for the evening. If this is your first time doing a paint night, welcome. I think you're gonna have fun. If you're doing it with your family, I think you might even have more fun. And if you're a little nervous, just relax. I am not your grade school, high school, or college art instructor. I'm just a guy from Central who hopes to make your summer evening a little more pleasant, and by the end of the evening, you will have created a piece of artwork that you're gonna be proud to hang in your home. Now, before we get started, if you haven't gotten the materials and you'd like to come back to this video later, these are a list of the materials that you will need. Brown, blue, white, green, and black acrylic paint. An 11 by 14 stretched canvas, an inexpensive one and a half inch paintbrush, a number two liner brush, a number five round brush, an old toothbrush, a Sharpie marker, a pencil, masking tape, paper towel, paper plates, and a cup or container for water. Those are the materials that I have on the picture that I will actually be using for the painting this evening. Now, if you've gone to the store or if you go to the store and you don't see these exact list of materials, I know sometimes art stores can be a little sparse on their brushes and some of their materials, especially now. Um, I just went in to buy a few things and the shelves aren't, uh, they're not stocked the way that they normally are. So there's also uh, a set of brushes that you can get. Um, I'm gonna put a picture up right now what those look like. It's just a series of, of brushes. If you can get a round brush, it's like around five. Um, and then a smaller brush that's around maybe a one or a two. If, if you can get the liner brush, that's great. Basically, you need a skinny brush, you need a medium brush, and you need a thicker brush. That will be sufficient for completing the painting for this evening. So some of these materials you already have on hand. You might not have the paint. Say so what type of paint? The picture showed what I currently use for this painting but you really can use any type of acrylic paint that you want. Just kind of match the colors that sort of look like what's on the picture and you're good to go. It's not really rocket science. Now there's some of you out there as we start going that might not want to adhere to the color palette that I've used. You might want to throw in some pinks and some purples, some lavender, some reds. It's your painting, you can do what you want. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to follow along and from there, we can find out what our painting is going to look like. At any time during this video, if you need to pause it, replay it, catch up, that's fine. You can do that. There will be specific times where I'll recommend that you pause the video because we need paint to dry. Paint, the paint will dry maybe five to ten minutes. So that'd be a good time to go get a snack, get a drink, um, walk the dog for two or three minutes. I don't know. Whatever it might be for you. I hope you can find all the materials and once you got everything, come back to this point and we can get started. The first thing that you're gonna need is to print out the link to the pattern that we're gonna to use to transfer to the canvas. So go ahead, download that, print it out, and then we'll be ready to get started. Here we go. Okay, so we have the sheet of paper that you printed out with the Joshua Tree pattern on it. So what I want you to do is flip it to the other side and put it up against a window. Now, it could be window, patio door, piece of glass with light behind it. That's the important thing. So what we're gonna do is just take your pencil and just rub on the back of it where the image is. You don't have to do the entire piece of paper, just where the image is. And this is a quick way to make what we used in the old days called carbon paper. Some of you younger folks might not have ever actually seen or heard of it, but it used to be used in typewriters to make duplicate copies. And I'm sure some of you have never used a typewriter either. And I have used both 
carbon paper and typewriters. I even have some car carbon paper that I actually used that to do my first prototype of this painting when I was kind of testing it out. And that is very, very convenient to use, but it's not necessary. It's just another thing to order at another expense. I tend to use a lot of it, so I ordered it so I don't have to do this step for the paintings that I need to transfer. And this pencil sharpened kind of funny only on one side, so I'm hoping it lasts the entire length of this of this painting, but it's not, it's gonna be, I don't know, I might actually make it through. I'm trying to use the best <laughs> part of the pencil lead here. So I got this electronic pencil sharpener that sometimes only sharpens the the edge of it, and it's, it doesn't do, doesn't do a good job of sharpening. It worked really good when I first got it, but now I don't really like it that much. But I think I'm gonna make it all the way through. So. We did make it all the way through. So once you have a something that looks like this all the way, we got it all done. We are now going to transfer it over to the canvas. And now I'm gonna show you how to do that. All right, the next step we're gonna do is, is prepare our canvas. And that is going to be, <clears throat> first off with masking tape. And we're going to, we're gonna put a little border around it. So what you wanna do is tear off four strips, line it up against the edge. Okay. And the main thing is to make sure the edge where the paint is gonna be is against the canvas really tight. So you wanna get all the air bubbles just like you're paint, masking off paint if you're doing the trim at your house. This is a pretty quick process here, but it'll be pretty neat when we're all done. You have a nice little border when you're done. And I think I just bumped the camera doing this. Sorry about that little wiggling. This is one of those things when you do a painting, it really makes it look much more professional when you tape this off and give it a nice little border. You can do this with a stretched canvas or you can also do it with a canvas panel. If you guys are familiar with those, they're just it's essentially canvas glued onto uh, like a piece of masonite or a piece of cardboard that's about an eighth of an inch thick. And then there's canvas on top of that. But if you do this on either one of those, it just looks so much nicer. Now, I can recommend once we get a couple more steps into it, you could actually tape this down to your table if you're not using a uh, easel. You don't have to use an easel for this later on. I will be using an easel just because it's a little bit easier for me to demonstrate than having to bend over and set up a camera like I'm doing right now. And my back will be aching by the time we're done, so I'm not gonna bend over and do that the entire time. So now you have the masks off border area. The next step is to take your Joshua tree and pretty much line it up right in the middle. Now I'm gonna recommend that you get a book that's about the same thickness as your canvas, your stretched canvas here. Put it underneath and just set it on top. And don't bump this. You know what? I'm gonna tape this down so it doesn't move once I get it into position. I recommend you do the same thing so it doesn't move on you. If you like where it's situated, then just go ahead and tape it down. Now it's not gonna be moving on you. Uh, the next step is to take a ballpoint pen. Now, I'm not gonna take a ballpoint pen. I'm going to take a, a ballpoint stylus. It doesn't actually write with ink, but it presses down the same way as a ballpoint pen. Um, I really kind of like that. So, now, remember I was telling you about 
uh, carbon paper. Well, I happen to have a sheet here. This is what carbon paper is. You, it's sort of waxy carbon-like on one side and just plain paper on the other. Now, if I was using this, I would put it down and I would go ahead and just make my line. Now I'm gonna show it to you. Makes a nice crisp line. I don't know if you can see that very well. Yeah, I guess it's showing up okay. But if you don't have carbon paper, which I would predict most of you do not, you just go ahead and start pushing on the image like so. Remember, you do this with the ballpoint pen and it's just the same and you get to see where you were drawing versus I actually don't see what I've drawn. So um, it would be nice if I had a ballpoint pen by me, but I don't know if I do in my studio. I have them all in another room. You know what? I am going to go get a ballpoint pen so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Ah, I do have a ballpoint pen over here. I'm going to use purple so you can see it a little bit better. Let's see what I've drawn already. See, I've already got some of the branches done. It's kind of neat. Okay, so now we can, now we can see. Now we're cooking with Crisco. You can really see what we're doing now. Maybe you can't. I can. <laughs> That's important for me if I know if I can see what I'm doing. So you can just kind of do this loosely and scratch it. Um, actually, I recommend kind of going over the line a couple times, and then you can check to make sure as you're doing it if it looks okay. All right, so same thing with the mountains in the background here. Okay. So you got the mountains and the branches done. Now we're gonna do the actual spines of the Joshua trees. I guess this would sort of be their leaves. That's what they're called. And you just trace over each one of these. Each line. And it doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't have to be perfect. We'll probably change a little bit on these. See, I went outside the lines a little bit. It's okay. This is just an indicator. It's a guide to help you follow along later on when we're painting. Um, it's gonna be covered up with paint. So don't worry about your lines here. You can do this fairly quickly. I remember when I moved here almost 30 years ago we came through the desert, we came through, well, actually, I moved here from Minnesota, so we came across the western United States, we came through the Mojave Desert, through Las Vegas, and we started seeing a lot of these Joshua trees then, and I was, I thought they were cactus at the time, I guess they are considered some sort of a cactus, but I was just mesmerized by them, and then when we moved originally to Palmdale, we live in Lancaster now, but when I saw all these Joshua trees, I just thought, hey, this, these are really cool. They really have a lot of character. And I've just, I've always really, really enjoyed seeing them. I see them every day when I drive from my home, wherever I'm going. And I love it in the springtime. I think it's usually March when they bloom, if it's a year that they're actually blooming. And they have those big white thick blossoms. They're kind of bell-shaped and they're pretty big. I like just really just about a half mile from my house. I have, it's not the Joshua Tree Reserve, but it's, there are a lot of them. And I like to go take a walk in the desert and just, just look at them. Sometimes I take pictures of them for references. Sometimes I take pictures like in silhouettes at sunset or during the sunrise. I just, I think they're fun. They're just, they got a lot of character. And some of the shapes are just kind of silly looking. They just grow how they want to. It doesn't seem like there's any rhyme or reason the way the branches go. 
And some of them are really pretty shaped and they're almost around and they're very symmetrical. And some of them are just, it's hard to describe how they, they seem to grow by themselves. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe that describes it. it just that, all right, there's a branch and whoop. And then, then you got like other trees that have these nice majestic branches that are all even and they branch out really nicely and the Joshua trees just kind of go, yeah. Okay, well, I think that's good. If you've got something that looks like this, um, that's sufficient. What we're gonna do now is, I, I'm sorry, I keep bumping the camera because the, the tripod leg is right here, but um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over the pencil lines with the Sharpie. And if you're asking why are we gonna do that? Well, because I told you so, and what I say you do tonight, you do. Well, I'm just kidding. I actually do have a reason for why we're doing it. I'm not just telling you to do it for the sake of doing it. Um, one, if we started painting on this right now, the, the pencil lines would smear and we would lose it. Um, so what I want to do is, is if we go with uh, a Sharpie on top of it, it will prevent it from smearing. But we're also going to be able to, to paint on top of it and still see through it because this black is pretty intense and as we start painting we'll be able to see it but by the time we're done we won't see the black marker lines so as we progress you'll see but i have found that it works really well to go ahead and outline it in a marker like a sharpie or something similar now you might have noticed when we started in my intro that I am wearing a Bob Ross shirt. And yes, I am a fan of Bob Ross. If you don't know who Bob Ross is, shame on you. You should. And if you don't, I'm going to tell you who he is. He is an artist. He was a painter. He had a TV show on how to paint, the joy of painting. Um, and he had that uh, in the 80s. I think he went even into the 90s with it. But he showed you how to oil paint, and he did a he did a half hour show, and he would do an entire painting in thirty minutes, and they're all on YouTube, Bob Ross's YouTube channel. You can watch them. I think I've watched all of them. There's there's hundreds of them. I think I've actually watched all of them. He's got a very soothing voice. He's got that big afro. He always wears a, a light blue shirt when he's painting just has a calming effect. So if you're having trouble sleeping, just put on a Bob Ross video and he will do his soothing voice will just put you to sleep. I, I will admit that I have watched many of his videos trying to just learn his techniques and how he did things. And I, I've been asleep after many of them. I mean, it just has that calming, soothing, relaxing sort of tone. And I just, I like listening to him. I like Bob Ross. So, um, so that's my little tribute to him. I decided to wear his, my shirt. It says there's, there's no accidents. Did I just say that? There's no mistakes, just happy accidents. See, no mistakes, just happy accidents. I even got his little quote wrong. But one of the things, he had a lot of quotes he would use on the show. Every tree needs a friend. Happy little trees. Happy little clouds. Little birds need somewhere to put their foots. So this Joshua tree, I wonder if we're going to have any little birds that are going to live in there someday. Probably not. So as you're doing these countless little spiny things, you're going to say, oh man, there's so many of them. Well, Joshua trees have a lot of spines on them. In order to make it look like a real Joshua tree, you got to put a lot of spines on it. So you got plenty of time to practice doing all these little spiral things. A starburst is essentially, you've got one on each side, you got four points, and then you got another point here, you got another point here. And they go opposite. Pretty soon you have a starburst and you have a Joshua tree. Spiny 
thing. Actually, I don't know what they're called. Spiny things on the Joshua trees. So we're going to call them spiny things. They're like starburst. Okay, I am almost done. I was tempted to put this in fast motion, so I did it all real quick, but I think I want to show you as we're doing it. You know, it's not, it doesn't have to be perfect trace on each one of these lines. You can take the time if you want to, that's fine. But I'm just kind of loosely going over each one. All right, I think we're good to go. So once you have it this far, you can go ahead and move to the next step, which we're going to get be getting ready to do. And we're actually going to be starting the painting process. So if you have to hit the pause button to catch up a little bit, that's okay. Um, go ahead and finish making all your little spines on there. I think I got them all. Kind of look between and kind of look back and forth. I think I got them all. And if you want to put a couple more on, that's okay too. It's your tree. It's not my tree. I started out making it, but it's your tree now. I've got the canvas secured to my easel. Now, you don't necessarily have to use an easel. You can keep it on the table. I would suggest maybe putting some tape down to secure it to the table. Um, also, you might want to have some newspaper underneath uh, or some plastic. Um, if I... When I have painted on my kitchen table, I do not paint directly onto the table. I put something underneath it. Um, you can thank me later for that little tip. So if you want to secure it, that's fine. Um, actually, if you take the tape off later on, it's a little bit easier to spin it when you're doing some of the, the spines of the, of the Joshua trees. So uh, let's get started. I will be sometimes ducking out of the camera to grab my paintbrush or water or something like that. So I'm going to try to keep it, um, everything so visible so you can see it. So, um, this is the amount of paint that I have for the blue right now. I might need a little bit more and I have a little bit of white. I haven't put all the, all the paint on my palette at this time. I do have a big Bob Ross palette, but uh, since I'm using runny paint, if I'm tipping it, it'd just be dripping down on the floor. So I'm going to keep a paper plate so I keep it uh, nice and neat. So what you want to do is just take the tip of your brush and get it all like that. Okay? And go right on top, just like that. All right. Don't put too much paint in your brush, just a little bit at a time. And now you're painting directly over the image of the, the Sharpie that we did of the Joshua tree. That's okay, because you're still going to be able to see through it. Right, just a light coat. You don't want it to get too heavy, too thick right away. We can always add to it. Just kind of keep going back and forth. Back and forth. Now, if you're using a new brush... One like this, this is an old brush, this is an old brush. If you're using a new brush, you might be, have already lost a bristle onto your paint. That's okay. Brushes lose bristles all the time. I've had expensive brushes lose bristles. I've had cheap brushes lose bristles. And it's, it's just part of painting. The trick is, what do you do when you get a bristle on your image and you want to get rid of it. Well, you could go get a tweezers. That's kind of, you could. Or you can just use a little technique with your brush to pick it off and then just remove it very easily. And I actually don't have any bristles on here, but if you do, if you've already lost one, you're going to, oh, come on, just tell me how to do it. Okay, let's say you have one right here. You just kind of lift it up like that. It'll stick to your brush. Wipe it on a piece of paper towel. I've got a piece of paper towel down here. You wipe it off on there, and then you just go right over it. It's pretty simple, pretty easy. 
All right, now, there you got your blue. And what you want to do is just dip into your white paint, just a little bit, just bring it on your brush. And down here, just go across and bring it back up. Gradually keep working it into the other blue. And you're going to just keep working it, keep working it. And go back down a little bit. Right down to about the mountains. Okay. Go up a little bit, maybe to the almost the top of the Joshua tree. You know, it's a nice gradient. You could go up just a little bit more if you want. It's up to you. You could have it lower if you want. But I think I'm satisfied with that. A little bit down here, right where the mountains are. Okay, now this is a time when we need this to actually dry. So, take your cup, rinse your brush, like I'm doing here, and kind of get the paint out of it. I've got a rug down, so if I drip, it catches it on there. I bought a $5 rug at Five Below a couple years ago. It's been great. There's a few paint spl splatters on it right now. Okay, so, um, see, I'm splattering a little bit. As much as I paint, I still end up splattering sometimes. What I'm doing now is I'm going off, the, when I went off the camera, I just am rinsing out my brush, getting the paint and the water out of it, because we are going to change colors. And we're going to do the bottom. We're going to do the sand next. So while we're waiting for the top sky to dry, I'm going to get some brown paint from over here. And I'm going to add that to my palette. And we won't need too much because it is just a small area of the sand. So dip it in the brown first, dip it in the brown, and then a little bit back into the white, and then go ahead and mix it. Should be about like that. You can see the color here. And just go ahead, put it right down from the bottom. And you'll kind of scrub it right up to the black line of your Sharpie. That'll be the base of the mountains. And just kind of even that out a bit. Right out to the edges. Cover up that line. And if you want to dip in a little bit more brown, just add a little bit more brown to the brush and put that on the bottom. I oh, need a little bit more. A little bit more on the bottom so it's a little bit darker brown on the bottom. That's just a good look on a painting to have it a little bit darker on the bottom, a little bit on the top. It helps the composition a little bit. Okay, so we have the preliminary sand, we have the preliminary sky, and you need to wait for this to dry just a few minutes. Nice thing, we live in the high desert and it is really, really dry here. There's not much humidity, so acrylic paint dries super fast. Um, I can see this is already starting to dry. So uh, why don't you go ahead, get something to drink, um, wait about five more minutes and your paint will dry and we will continue. And we are back. It's been about five minutes for my paint to dry. And if you want to see my full shirt here, no mistakes, only happy accidents. That's what my shirt says. So just in case you were wondering. 
Now, it's time to continue with the painting process. You might have noticed this little bottle appeared out of nowhere. Well, it's just a, it's just a little spritzer bottle. And what I use that for is if I am taking a little bit of a break in between um, waiting for paint to dry, um, I just give my palette a little spritz with water to keep it from drying out. Um, that's one trick that I do as far as acrylic paint. Uh, another trick is to don't put more paint on my palette than I'm planning on using in the time period that I'm going to be painting. Um, it'll just dry up and so I use a limited palette and only put on the paint that I'm using. So right now we are going to add a little bit of texture to our sand. Remember that toothbrush that was on there, old toothbrush? Now you can use your current toothbrush and then paint with it and continue brushing your teeth with it. You could do that. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, I'm sure your mom or dad would say not to do that. So I'm going to recommend once you use this with paint, not to use it again. I don't think I have to tell you that. See this one, see what this one looks like right now? Doesn't that look, doesn't that look nice? Okay. So what we're going to do is add a little bit of water and you can just take a little bit with a brush if you want to, but I'm just going to spritz it. This is where it gets a little bit messy. So you just get a little bit on your brush and you spritz it. Okay, this will show you the technique for spritzing it. You just go ahead, pull your thumb across the toothbrush and let the paint splatter onto the canvas. This shows the technique. You get the hang of it. Just a little bit. You add a little bit of texture to it all over. Back up a little bit. You know, get all over the place. Just be careful with it. It does make a little bit of a mess. get a nice even coat on it just all over you have a little bit missing here and there that's okay you just you just want a little bit Oop, I got a big glop there but that's okay that's character you just kind of add as much as you want and I think I'm good with that rinse it out with water and you're ready to brush your teeth. All right, now we're going to paint the mountains in the background. These will, I think these will be the Tehachapis. Instead of the San Gabriels on the southern side, we're going to go with the northern side. We'll make them the Tehachapis. But if you want them to be the San Gabriels, that's okay. So, you still have brown. You still have blue on your palette. So what you're going to do is take a little bit of each and mix the two. And you're going, blue and brown, why would you want to mix those two? Well, if you mix the two, you sort of get a neutral gray color. And we want sort of a neutral bluish gray for the mountain color. So see what this is doing here? It's getting kind of a grayish blue by mixing the two colors. All right, so just go ahead and smear that onto it. Follow the line. You can barely see it now, but it's still there. You can go up to your tree. You don't have to go, you don't have to be really careful. Or you can go all the way across if you want to. That's okay. But you really don't want to go too low of your horizon line here. And if you do go below it, because I just did, you, know, you just extend it a little bit. That's not a problem. Went over the line a little bit, that's okay. 
There are no mistakes, only happy accidents. That's a Bob Ross saying. It's on my t-shirt and it's true. Yeah, if you think you make a mistake in your painting, you work through it, make it look a little bit different. It's okay. That's what painting's all about, having fun with it. Go right up to the line. And you just kind of, you just kind of scrub it in, get some, get a little bit more blue in there. You mix it up. It doesn't have to be all the solid color. If it's a little bit stronger blue here, a little bit browner there, a little bit grayer, it's okay. It looks a little bit more real like mountains if you have varying color, varying texture. Okay, we've got that covered. Yeah, we'll keep adding a little bit to your brush here and there. And now, just kind of pull the mountains down a bit. You won't see it much, but the mountains kind of, they, you know, they go up and they go down and they have peaks. So we'll just bring the mountains down a little bit, kind of at an angle. And that should be good for our mountains. All right, you want to rinse out your brush. And now we're going to paint the branches of the Joshua tree. If you need to add a little brown, add a little brown to your brush. I mean, add a little bit of brown to your palette. And we'll start doing it up here first, up here on the tree. We won't, we won't go cross over the mountain area yet. We're going to leave that, leave that dry a little bit so it doesn't combine. Because if you do start going over that, it'll, it'll remove some of the paint and the color of the mountains, and we don't want that. So you'll be painting right over some of these spikes of the Joshua trees, and that's okay. This is only an indicate this pattern was only an indication for where everything goes, just as a little bit of a guide. We'll paint right over it, and everything will be just fine. We're just going to do the branches so we know where the spines connect to for now. And we'll go down here. Those mountains are almost dry. And right where the, they didn't really have a bottom of the Joshua tree where it ended on the pattern, so we'll just kind of blend that to the bottom there. Okay, now I'm going to see if we can just put this right across. Make it pretty thick going across the paint if it hasn't dried. You don't want to pull the paint off of it that's below it. All right. I can hear the wind howling outside right now. Makes me feel like I'm in the Antelope Valley. I'm painting a Joshua tree and listening to the wind blow outside. All right. Guess what? We get to wait for paint to dry again. So take a break and let the brown dry. And in about five minutes, we'll be ready to paint the spines on the Joshua tree. All right, it's been about five minutes and the paint should have dried by now. We're going to continue working on the branches, but right now we're going to put a few of those spiny things that are all on the branches and on the trunk of the tree. So you want to add a little bit of black paint to your palette. 
Put it next to the brown because you will be using those two together. So it won't take much, just a few drops really. So mix that in with some of the brown paint. And again, I'm using the, the number five round. So I'm trying to show you what it should look like here without all my paint running into each other. All right, so get a little bit off of the paint on the side of your brush. So you can kind of bring your brush to a point. And right now you just kind of put little jaggy things in. I don't have enough black in there yet, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. It's really just trial and error on a lot of this stuff with painting. It's like, oh, that looks good on your palette. You put it on your painting and it's like, it doesn't look good. So we're going to add a little bit more and just bring it out a little bit. We're going to add a little bit more black to this and we're going to use our other smaller paintbrush as well. But we're, we're establishing a little bit of texture when we get those spiny things on there. So a little bit of texture and variation of color. Just a little bit there. So I'm taking it, taking the brush, so I'm pushing down and I'm kind of flicking so it makes a little bit of a point. I'm accentuating it a little bit on the edges there. Okay, so we're done with that brush. Go ahead and drop it in your water cup. Take your skinny brush. Now this is a, a number two liner brush. It's also it could be called a rig rigger brush. Um, so I'm gonna use a little bit more black. I'm gonna draw that into that brown mixture here. So it's gonna be a very, very dark brown. I want a little bit, you don't want too much in your brush. You don't want too much. You want a nice point on it. So what you can do now is just put a little, these little points of the spiny parts so you can see it going off. Again, you push it and you flick it. Push it and then you flick it and you get a little bit of a point. And if you want to, get a piece of paper and you can practice doing these points. But you should just flick it. So you start with a thicker line and then you pull it out and you can you can put a little bit of water in your brush and make the paint a little bit thinner. So it's more like, almost like ink and it gets a little bit easier to do it. So practice, you got plenty of opportunities to practice this little bit of a stroke. And I hope you can see this. I've got two cameras. I'm going to try and do a close up on one here. Try to follow the contour of the branches. Keep them going in one direction. That's sort of the way the Joshua trees go. See, I'm kind of going one direction here. You don't want every which way, just kind of follow it. And we'll do this branch. Now, I know a question that many of you are asking right now. What is up with those curtains in the background? Well, I'm a big Batman fan. And if you've ever been to Harvest, 
I'll let you in a big secret right now. The guy that draws pictures in the Batman costume, that's me. Don't tell anybody because you reveal my secret identity. But I've been a Batman fan since I've been a little kid. And my studio room here is actually my son's old bedroom. When he was a little boy, you guessed it, he was a Batman fan too. So we had a Batman theme in his room. And when he moved out and got married a few years ago, you know, he kept those curtains up because he's a Batman fan. And I thought, well, I'm not taking them down. Because I like those curtains. So everything else in the room came out. We stripped everything down, moved all my art supplies in, but we kept Batman curtains. And off camera right now, you can't see, I've got a Batman poster behind the camera here. I've got two bat, three Batman cowls in this room right now. So I like Batman. I like my Batman curtains. And I'm not taking them down. All right, we keep going with these spiny things. You get plenty of practice doing your points with the paint. If the paint gets too thick, add a little bit more water. And you can really add as many as you want, or as few as you want. All right, now we're going to do, we'll do something really crazy. And we're going to add a little bit of white to this madness. A little bit of brown and a little bit of white, a little bit of black. And we're going to put a few marks here and there. So we've got a base of brown, we've got some dark black spiny things, and then we've also got some white spiny things to kind of highlight that. Take your time with this, there's no rush. You want to play it back, kind of see how I'm doing this? Take your time. I've been doing this for a long time, so it's pretty easy for me, but this might be the first time you've ever painted a Joshua tree with these little spiny things. So just add a few. The thing is, practice getting the, the stroke so it's thick to thin. And you can add as many as you want. I'm gonna put a few more down here and up there. But as you're putting this on, it's going to have a real kind of thorny, prickly look. Some of these other branches, we're, we're going to be covering them up with the, with the spikes, so we don't need to worry about that. Okay, you can put as many of those as you want to. I'm satisfied with that. And we are going to move on to the spiny green parts of the Joshua tree. All right, back again after the paint has dried a little bit more. We are done with doing the branches and the, the little detail spiny things on the trunk and everything. So now add a little bit of green to your palette, just like that. Take your liner brush again. Now we're going to be drawing the spiny things. So I have found it easiest to use my stroke like this and just cover where you can see the lines. Probably just barely see them now. Over just like that. So each each spine of each little nodule here, you're gonna draw that out. Like I said, you get plenty of practice drawing it out. And 
You know what? What I'm going to do right now, I'm going to grab a piece of paper. And I'm just going to put this on here. And I want you to be able to see better how I'm doing this stroke. So it's kind of like that. That. Like that. See so a paper. Remember how I said that sometimes it helps to rotate? So if you can rotate your canvas, sometimes it helps just to rotate it like this. So you can free up the tape. If you have a tape down, start rotating it on each one of them. So you push down harder here and then you pull it off of the page. I am best at probably going like this. So I get them straight and smooth. Okay, so that's how that's how it's done. Yes, we have to do each one of these, but that's one thing when you do a painting, you spend a lot of time on it, you spend a lot of detail on it, people can tell. So. We're going to put the initial green on these. Right now you can't really see it too well because the green and the blue kind of cancel each other out because they're the, sort of the same hue. But we're going to add, just like we did with this part of the branches and the trunk, we are going to be adding that also to the green spines of this tree. Well, that one was not too good, but that's all right. And we'll be adding a few more spikes of like a darker green and black. Boy, I'm running out of things to say other than keep making the same stroke about a thousand times here. You might get a little bored, but you know what? If you do, just take a little break. You don't have to do them all at once. Come back after a few minutes and do some more. Take a little break. It's okay. I do that all the time. I just got to keep going to get this finished because you guys are watching me. I'm not sure. I might speed this part up on the video. I might not. I might sh keep it on here just showing you. It is a little tedious. But like I said, I want you to make a painting that you're going to be proud of and you want to be able to hang it in your house. Especially some of you uh, little ones. I want people to say, you didn't paint that. And you can say, yes, I did. Every little spine and every little brush stroke, I painted that. Some people still won't believe you. Now, some of you moms and dads, your friends are going to say, you didn't paint that. But your kids might be sitting right next to you and saw you seeing you do it. So they're a witness. You actually did paint it.
Ah, we're almost done here on this, this round. We've got, what, three of these to go, I think. One, two, and I'm going to do one more here. See how we covered up the branch? You just barely see it, and that's fine. Okay, now you can add a little bit of black to the green. Maybe even a little bit of brown. That'd be fine too. So you have just a little bit darker color. Add a little bit of water to it. And add a few more in between the other spines, the other spikes. See, I'm going in between. Gives a little bit of variety, makes them a little bit thicker. So I'm going in between. Some of them you don't have to go between each one of them, but it helps. You'll notice if you take a walk and look at the Joshua trees, they are pretty solid in the center of these, the green spines. And then they kind of spread out where you see the outline, the actual points. Now, some of this paint might still be wet on the other green, and that's okay. You get a little bit of blending going on. There's nothing wrong with that. Might want to add a little bit more black now and then. But have some fun with it. Experiment a little bit. I'm kind of being sloppy with this, but it just makes it a little bit more fun. There are no mistakes, only happy accidents. And I'd also say that every tree needs a friend but I don't think you guys want to do a second Joshua tree anywhere on this. We're just going to do one tree. So he's going to be a loner. Maybe someday we'll do another painting with multiple Joshua tree friends. Okay. Adding a little bit more black here on the top. Add a little bit more water, a little bit more black, and just add a few of the darker ones here and there, not maybe like three or four on each one. Not that many. You just want to add a little bit of shadow. This would be sort of a highlight or detail. All right, rinse out your brush a little bit, get some green on there, a little bit of white. 
It should look something like that. All right. What you want to do now is add a few of these to not all of them, just a few. Maybe this top one. Oh, I missed some black on this one. Didn't see it, so. I'll put some black in this one. It's a little bit darker. And I'll rinse out my brush and add some more. Okay, I dipped it right back into the lighter stuff. Just where you think it might need a few, you just kind of put them here and there. Not a lot, because this is just a slight highlight. Goes against the dark, and then you can see it. You can't have light without the dark. Guess who said that? Bob Ross. All right, I think we're about done. You want to keep adding a few more, that's good. But last thing you want to do, last thing you want to do on a painting is to go ahead and sign it. So I'm going to use a little bit of black, and a little bit of brown, and I'm going to thin it down a bit. Like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my name right here. Alright, we are almost finished. We've got all the details on. We've signed our names. There's one thing left to do. That is to take the tape off. What you want to do is just peel it off the edges. Watch this. Watch this. Isn't that slick? Isn't that fun? Like the best part of the painting right there. You have an instant frame and it is ready to hang onto your wall. So I hope you had a good time. I had a fun time instructing you guys. Um, if you've done this and you want to show it off, I'd love to see it. So. If you want to tag at CCC Lancaster on Instagram, um, give it a hashtag, live and love like Jesus. Um, you can email it to me, mmilkey at centralchristian.org. Um, put it on your Facebook pages. I'd love to see them. So I'd love to see pictures of you with them and pictures of them by themselves. So I hope you guys had a fun time. I'd really like to do another one. So you guys have a good night and I will see you next time.